Warning, what I'm about to share with you may seem a little crazy at the moment, but I promise just stick with me to the end of this video and it all makes sense at the end. When I, when I started Save Your Stories recently, I started it with a mission. And the mission is to share our personal stories about Jesus, <clears throat> how he has impacted and, ch and changed our lives and our eternal lives with the world. I just heard and saw all these different stories that existed out there and people just didn't know how to tell them. So I thought I would bridge uh, that reality with my love of writing and bring those together to start, start Savior Stories. And now I'm seeing this opportunity in the marketplace where we can share these stories with the world in a whole different way using blockchain technology. Now, you may have heard of the word blockchain recently in the news, or maybe Bitcoin, or maybe even Ethereum. And I know they're very confusing topics, and my purpose of this video isn't to talk over your head if you're not familiar with these things. Uh, but my purpose is to show you how you can become an active participant and save your stories, and have some say in what stories we write about, what charitable causes we give to, and just really have some ownership and what I'm doing here with Save Your Stories and, and the writing that I'm doing. So what I'd like to do right now is we'll switch over to my laptop and I'll just briefly show you my vision for Save Your Stories, uh, how we can use blockchain technology and what's going on in that space to really spread the gospel around the world. Okay, now we're on my computer here <clears throat> and we're gonna do a very quick primer on what blockchain is and uh, how it can help with what I'm doing here with Savior Stories, and how we can share Jesus with more people. And I promise I'll do my very best to not get super technical here, to keep it very simple, uh, just so you can see how uh, you can be an active participant in this and help with Savior Stories. So um, here is a picture that we're looking at here, <clears throat> showing the difference between what would be like a traditional centralized database and how blockchain works. So database, of course, is just a place where digital information is stored um, for different, you know, companies and whatnot. And so the, you know, the example that we'll look at here on the left-hand side for the traditional database, an example would be like Facebook, you know, if you're looking at a social media company, right? Uh, they have a centralized database with all the data that you give them about yourself, right? So you log in, you have your user account, and they centrally control and really own all that information. They can shut down your account whenever they want. And even though they say you own your data uh, in their terms of service, that actually says that they do with every single thing you upload you know, to their site. Uh, and it also, of course, as we've seen in the last year especially, uh, can lead to different types of censorship, which I believe in the long term could also affect even sharing the gospel with people on, on these different platforms. Um, it could already be happening in, in some ways that we don't even realize. Um, and so we're looking for a way, especially as like creators, like with me with writing and save your stories about uh, how we can have more control on the user side and also on the creator side with our data and uh, and also not and also be censorship proof. <clears throat> and that's what we're looking at with the blockchain, where blockchain is just a fancy word for like basically like a like a decentralized database where if you look here, each one of these in very sim simple terms, each one of these dots represents basically a computer that all different types of people own all over the world. So if this was like the, let's say, if you've heard of Bitcoin before, this would be like the Bitcoin blockchain. And each one of these computers can be connected to the blockchain. And it could be a per any anybody in the world, a person, you know, there are companies that have, you know, access to the Bitcoin network too, but it's decentrally managed and secured by not one organization, one company, one person, and that's what makes it more secure. <clears throat> and also it's what they call immutable, which means the data can never be changed. When you put the data, your data on the blockchain or there's a transaction that happens on it, no one can, it's pretty much hack proof. When you hear about someone losing their Bitcoin, it's not because the Bitcoin blockchain or any other blockchain has been hacked or the technology has been hacked. It's that people give, uh, access to hackers to their digital wallet, you know, basically, which is the only way you can get access to your personal data because um, it's all encrypted, right? It uses the same type of security encryption that um, has been used by websites for years that is something that is not hackable. Um, and so that really is 
just in a primer, they're pursuing blockchain and a traditional database, right? Um, so with this underlying technology, you can start doing some really cool things as a creator. And so um, we've seen this a lot in the you know, digital art space where people are using blockchain technology basically to uh, take their digital art and make it scarce. Um, and so we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, what I'm looking to do with save your stories and the writing and the stories is uh, putting that on the blockchain. And so one <clears throat> site that I'm, I'm, we're working on now is um, this site called Mirror, mirror.xyz, which I know sounds weird, but essentially, you know, I can come in here to Mirror. I just have, you know, one article I've created here um, and actually posted on the site. And, it, you know, you can like WordPress or anything else. You can go in, you can write a post and save it. Uh, however, the actual data for this post is not stored on mirror servers. It's not centrally controlled. It's, con it's, uh, actually stored on a blockchain that I only have access to the data through my, what you call a private key and through my wallet that's connected securely to that data. I'm the only one that I actually have sovereign ownership over that data. Um, as the you know person who created you know savior stories <clears throat> um so yeah so that is stored there and then when it comes to uh mirror site um they're just providing the basic tools right they're providing a, an easier gateway to be able to connect and interact with that data so that is huge from like what we just talked about with the example with facebook right and so that's um now on top of that in addition to provide you know putting the information on the blockchain securely and having access to it and being censorship proof the other side of it is what we would call now once again another fancy term here an nft which maybe you've heard that word bouncing around it stands for non-fungible token which just basically means it's a piece of code that you can put on the blockchain that um reference can reference especially uh, something that's digital uh, and can make it scarce and can prove ownership of something. So for instance, I have this article that I wrote, right? And it's digital and on the internet, it can be copied a hundred times, a thousand times. People can copy it and share it and paste it and do all that stuff, which is great because it gets the um, word of Jesus out, out there more. On the flip side of that, uh, how do you, there's no way to really say like have con ownership over the content and say you know hey we're the ones that you know actually own this content um outside of you know copyright infringement or whatever but you know no one's going to do that so i mean essentially that is what an nft does it's a piece of code that you can put on a blockchain that can uh can't be hacked and it can't be changed unless uh, the person who owns it wants to make a change, uh, basically, I guess you say transfer it or sell it to somebody. And that's why it's in its, and there's, so there's scarcity in that. You're taking something that's digital, you're taking a piece of content and you're adding this form of rarity or scarcity to it, right? It's like uh, if you collect, let's say basketball cards and they, you know, let's say a uh, company only made, you know, 50 Michael Jordan uh, rookie cards or whatever, right? So because they're physical, they didn't print anymore. So they're just naturally scarce. And that's something in the digital world we didn't have until now. And so with these savior stories, uh, it's a way to uh, share in the value of the stories that are being created, right? Because we post these things on uh, Facebook and these other sites, <clears throat> and they basically, you know, as far as the benefit to the organization, because, you know, it does take money to run any you know any sort of brand or save your stories almost all of it just automatically goes to facebook and if you want to run ads let's say to that try to boost it more you're giving more money to facebook and this in this situation is bringing the power back to us the creators and the users um to be able to uh control most of the value that's coming out of what we're creating uh and so in the uh the biggest market where this has happened first has been digital art right like people have been at least in the physical art world people spend crazy amounts of money or smaller amounts of money on physical art 
But with a digital image, there's never really, you know, people create digital images, but they just copy, get copied a hundred times. And how do you have like any scarcity or, um, or ownership stake in it? And that's essentially what you do now. This site called OpenSea is just a marketplace of NFTs. There's a handful of categories in here, but the biggest category has been digital art. And you come in here and people, I mean, I know a lot of this art kind of looks crazy at the moment. <laughs> so, I'll, you know, I guess arts or the arts in the eye of the beholder, right? But um, the uh, people are bidding on and buying these NFTs basically. And so what happens is it gets put in their digital wallet and they can showcase that they own them. It makes them part of the community of whatever they're buying, um, you know? And so while this sort of thing, I would say may look silly right now, um, Facebook also sounded silly to people and social media sounded silly to people not that many years ago. Uh, back in, I remember in 2002 when I was a freshman at college um, and I got my first Facebook account. At that point, only people, kids in college could get Facebook accounts. By the time I was a senior, everyone had a Facebook account. My parents, my grandparents were getting on Facebook and, it, and all of a sudden it expanded to the mainstream. This is gonna happen with NFTs and this is happening with blockchain, whether you realize it or not, this is gonna be used in all facets of society. And I can guarantee you in the next few years, you're gonna, whether you know it or not, gonna be doing something with non-fungible tokens and with cryptocurrency and with blockchain. This is just the next wave of the internet and it's gonna move faster than the previous uh, things we had scale on the internet, just because the rate of change continues to get faster and faster. So we're going to use the goal. My goal here is to be ahead of this curve and to have savior stories positioned in the right spot so that when the mainstream hits, Jesus is there. Cause as we already know, there's so much filth on the internet. Like, can we get some more, you know, Jesus on the internet, please in these, in these spots and, and being able to scale and reach more people. Um, so specifically when you come and look at uh, mirror, which is uh, one project that is taking the NFT mindset and applying it to writing, um, you can basically like create entries, which are basically posts like the one I have here, but then you can also through their uh, platform, you can, what you say, mint or create NFTs that are related to each post. So you could have an, I'd say like an ownership stake and a more active, take a more active role in the content that's being created through Savior Stories. Uh, and so the way that they do it is like, let's say you come on this page and I've, I don't have to create every post as an NFT, but I did for this one. Cause this is like the first one and I'm showing you and I'm, I'm trying to see just, you know, I'm testing it. Um, you know, if you're like, oh, I want to collect this NFT and then, you know, I want to support save your stories and, you know, help out and also be able to showcase like, Hey, this is something I support and believe in. Right. And also start to build their, this community of Christians online who want to spread the word. Um, you can kick up, click on uh, collect NFT. And then you'll see that basically they have three different levels. So it's not a one-to-one -one NFT to the article, but there's basically three levels. There's, you know, the legendary, they say, where there's only five of them. So very rare. And that costs one ETH. And ETH, if you're not familiar, is uh, for Ethereum. Ethereum is the second most popular blockchain beside Bitcoin. On Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin is pretty simple and mostly just about like storing for value and is more of just a money. Uh, Ethereum is way more complicated and complex where you can basically like entire companies, entire software, uh, versions of software and everything and platforms are being built on top of Ethereum, which is basically a distributed blockchain across the whole internet. There's no one who ultimately controls it, right? But there is a currency that you have to use to interact with the Ethereum blockchain. If you want to run transactions, if you want to make an NFT, if you want to buy an NFT, they have, you know, like transaction fees and whatnot. Um, and so, and to pay people for whatever you're, you know, you're paying for, you do that in what's called ETH, you know, Ethereum, that's the, uh, the token that they use or the coin. And so th the value of one ETH right now is $4,500, right? And so the price of, in dollar terms, the price of ETH goes up and down. Of course, this is new, newer technology still, even though Bitcoin's been around since 2012, at least. So there is volatility, but in the long term, the things, things have been continuing to go up. Once again, I should say this is not financial advice. There's no expectation of profit here. 
research this stuff on your own, but this is just my personal belief that these things are going to continue to to go up. Um, so one ETH is you know forty five hundred dollars, but it's also there's only five of these, and that's the legendary level. And I don't set these values. This is just the default set settings or what Mirror has. Um, at least for this type of NFT. And then there's one called rare where there's like 50 of them, right? So, you know, it's less scarce and that's 0.1 ETH or which would be you know $450 or common where there's 500 of them. And this is so the average, you know, more and more people, the more average, I'd say the average person, you know, we're not going to go spend $4,500 on a, on an NFT, um, can spend 0.01 ETH, which would be about $45 as of this posting. That price could be very different in a month from now, um, but that's where it currently is. And and uh, yeah, and that's it. And then this automatic, once you get it, and I'll show you this in a second with the digital wallet. Once you start playing in the world of Chris cryptocurrency and you have a digital wallet and you go to a site and you literally just click on a button to buy something, no credit card, it's so... You don't want to go back to banks. You don't want to go back to credit cards. It's it sucks and it's inefficient. <laughs> you literally just say collect NFT, your wallet pops up and you say, "Yep, I have a transaction." Boom, transaction's done. You know, it has to verify some through the Ethereum network and it depends how busy it is, but um it's very simple and straightforward. Um and so basically you collect this NFT and it's like the next question is well, what do you do with it? Right. Well, so it ends up in your wallet. And then um, I know if you have like a profile on mirror, you can display it. Um, but there's also over time and it's already happening. There's other sites. And I'm not going to get into it at all now where you can like showcase. Basically, people can showcase like this is what I support. This is what I believe in. These are the communities that I'm part of. These are NFTs I bought um, and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. And then. Uh, the other cool stuff that we that we can do with this is crowdfunding. So we can like crowdfund a project. Basically, I'm like, hey, I want to write this really long story. It's going to involve these different people. It's going to take a lot of my time. Like, hey, I'd like to <clears throat> maybe, I don't know, take some extra funds to like, I don't know, I have to buy something or whatever. You could do like a crowdfund, you know, where it's like basically um, people buy into the fund. I Basically, th with this fund, I create a token. I come up with a name for a token that it's going to be on the blockchain. So it's like creating, you know, and then supporters come in and they buy some of that token and what they buy supports the crowd fund. But then you've also bought in is basically kind of like part ownership, fractional ownership of the crowd fund. So whatever proceeds come out of that crowd fund, let's say it turns into an NFT that we then sell, whatever the proceeds are based on how many tokens you put in, you get a percentage of that, right? It's just kind of, you know, or you can get other perks as well. Like you come into the crowdfunding and create other perks and, you know, other types of things. Um, and then uh, there's either kind of my bigger vision for this or what we want to do. This I know there's a lot here. So we've talked about, you know, NFTs and we've talked about the crowdfunding thing. Um, the last thing would be called, which is called is a DAO, which is a uh, decentralized autonomous organization, which is a crazy name. But basically, I think for a lot of types of businesses and just communities, this is where things are going to head, where instead of having just like control in one big central organization or company or maybe even just like a, a celebrity or an influencer or creator, you know, a, someone who's you know a creator or whatever, um, with this, <clears throat> a DAO is a uh, a bought-in group of people who have a say in what happens within this community. So, for instance, with Save Your Stories, I could start a DAO and create a token on the blockchain uh, that is tied into the DAO. Uh, you could buy that token, and you could get some extra. You know, let's say you get some perks from that. You get connected to like deeper connection to the community. You can have like one-on-one -on -one conversations with me. I mean, it's like different things. But on top of that. There's also governance involved where then there could be like a vote that comes up. So like, hey, you know, we put out a vote like, hey, here's a list of stories we're thinking about doing. Uh, you know, what would you like to see next? What, what do you think would have the most impact for the gospel? And then based on like then you have a say based on how many tokens you own. Right. So you have a say based on how much skin you skin you, ha you have in the game um, or, hey, there's a, this list of um, 
charitable causes that we would like to support what we're doing here. Uh, how do you guys feel about you know who we should support? And we could have a vote on that. And so it's not just about me as a writer, just trying to build this audience and then just doing anything I want, but also having a community of Christians who are working together on the internet, using this technology for good to reach more people. Um, and so <clears throat> the last part I'll, I'll mention, because I just mentioned that charitable, one other thing I'm visualizing with the charitable um, aspect of it is the, this section called splits, which <clears throat> basically just whenever, uh, let's say, you know, we, I, let's say I create an article, um, a story, and it's about another person, and uh, I mint it as an NFT, and it gets sold a bunch of times. I could have the proceeds from that NFT. Can, this is coded in the blockchain, so I can't touch it. Once it's in there, it can never be changed. So you have, in this process, you don't even have to trust me that it's done right. I can create a split where, uh, you know, save your stories, and for my time, you know, I get some of the proceeds. Uh, the the subject or the person's story and who wrote it or who is who does who was it about can get some proceeds. And then the other really cool part that I, I'd like to add in is we can tie in a charitable uh, cause or you know nonprofit or whoever, um, or maybe if it's even just someone directly we want to support. It doesn't matter. All they need is a is a, is a digital wallet that they can set up in five minutes, um, that they automatically get the proceeds, and. All that has to happen is the NFT is minted. When someone buys it, it automatically happens in the blockchain and they go look in their digital wallet, which we'll look at here briefly. And the it would be Ethereum, you know, that would be the which you can always on exchanges, you can always switch back Ethereum to dollars if you need to, depending on the price. Me, the more I get into the cryptocurrency world, the less I want to switch back to dollars. <laughs> um, they automatically get it. Right. And so it's just like it's just about we get more of the value and we're able to share it with other people and bless other people while also getting the, the gospel out to more people, which is great. Um, so. To be a part of this and to get started, one, I'm not going to go through into a whole this is a very long video already. I'm not going to go through a whole primer and how to do all this stuff. But I will say the basics are you need two things. Um, one, you need some sort of a, a wallet probably like a digital wallet, which there are a handful out there um, that allows you to connect to, you know, various blockchains. Um, the one that I and you either can have one, you can download on your phone as an app, or you can just install it as an extension or like in your browser. The one I like to use is uh, called MetaMask. Literally, if you just like went on Google and just typed in MetaMask, it would come up and you can download it. Um, It'll ask you to set up a security phrase in case you lose access to your digital wallet. Because if you lose access to it, or your computer dies or something happens, like you're going to need that pass backup phrase or your whatever was in the wallet's gone forever, right? Because no one can change it. Um, so you need a MetaMask or some sort of wallet. I'd recommend MetaMask. And then you have to buy some Ethereum, right? Because you have to be able to, that's what you'd use to like, purchase NFTs or like we get, you know, create some sort of a crowdfund or a DAO later. That's how you like, I don't, I hate use, I'll say, I'll say, uh, I don't want to say invest because I don't want to get into like, oh, this is like a stock and this isn't financial advice and that sort of thing. But um, it's more or less you're like interacting with the community and becoming a bigger part of it. Um, and so there's different, the easiest place to start getting, to get started in this world <clears throat> and make it the easiest is, Coinbase is uh, the main exchange. You can go to coinbase.com, set up an account, or go uh, download their app. And you literally just go down. You can see Ethereum's in the app. You click on it, connect your bank account, and you can buy Ethereum. Um, there is a little bit more involved because you have to transfer the Ethereum then to, to your MetaMask wallet. You know, there's a couple little things there. But once you get the feel for this, it becomes really slick and easy. I'm just being honest. I know I'm a tech guy, and so... At, it, it comes to me easier. However, I know from just experience and dealing with lots of users over the years, once you just start to understand the very basics, it's getting simpler. Um, and so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, the link below to this first NFT article story that I've posted <clears throat> is below this video on YouTube um, in the description. So you can click on that if you want to check it out.
you want to collect it, if you know you're ready to do this stuff. Um, also, <clears throat> because this is brand new and I'm really just trying to get as many people as I can involved, um, if you have any questions or you want to get involved, but you have any questions about like getting set up on Coinbase, getting MetaMask going, you get stuck somewhere and you need help um, to do this and be involved with Save Your Stories, just let me know. Just send me an email, ryan at um, saveyourstories.com. Gladly help. We can jump on a Zoom call, whatever you need, uh, just so I can, you know, because I'm trying to get this going. So uh, that's it. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks and God bless.